Welcome back to my T206 journey. This is video three called how to collect the set. That is a bit of a clickbait title because there is no right way to collect the T206 set. No matter what anybody tells you, there's a million opinions out there, but the best way to collect the set is the way that you want to do it. And so for me, I'm going to talk about the, the main areas that I have made some decisions on and how I collect the set, like the Hall of Famers, the Southern Leader Leaguers, the Short Prints, and then some specific cards that I just like. Then I'm going to talk about the grading company that I prefer, and maybe we'll get into the uh, T206 collection book a little bit. And lastly, the commons, what I do with those. So first of all, uh, for me, I made a decision to collect all of the Hall of Famers in graded slabs. I prefer SGC. I just like the way that the slab looks. I am a fan of both the old and the new inserts, either the green one or the black one with the big number on the right side. Uh, this is Johnny Evers. This is, I believe, a Piedmont 150, so this is an early printing. He has three subjects, a portrait, a Cubs across the chest, and a Chicago across the chest with a beautiful sunset for the Chicago one. If you haven't seen that, make sure to look it up. Uh, but I'm going to show some cards that I haven't shown in the last two videos and talk about how I collect the set. So my opinion on the Hall of Famers is that if you are just getting started or maybe you are halfway through and you're looking for some direction, I would encourage you to focus. Focus on the Hall of Famers. There's a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, you might hear this in some of the podcasts that I recommend, like the Monster Podcast, uh, but the Hall of Fame is forever. Like they are already there. There's not gonna be any scandals that come out about them in uh, like comparison to collecting modern day stuff. They are there and their legacies are cemented. Um, so the reason I like to focus on the Hall of Famers or why I focused on the Hall of Famers first is because they are not getting any cheaper. Um, in five years, I believe these Hall of Famers are gonna be worth more money than they are today. The same thing with 10, 20, and 30 years. I don't think the value on these is gonna go down, even though some people might think that younger baseball fans aren't collecting it. The allure is always there and almost every week I meet somebody new who is like declaring that they're gonna slay the monster, they're gonna conquer it. So uh, back to the cards. This is a Mordecai Brown. One of my videos would not be, uh, would not be one of my videos if we didn't look at at least one Mordecai Brown. So this is a PSA. I don't dislike PSA. I actually like how the cards sit in the holder better because they don't move as much as SGC. But this is a 150, so this is another one of those early printings. And this is a, I believe, a 25. Yeah, a 25 factory, So, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, so that's a three. Mordecai Brown, Cubs across the chest. I have all of my... Hall of Famers in graded slabs, and the goal is to get them all in SGC. So they stack well, I can put them in a safe deposit box, I can put them in whatever, and they all stack on top of each other pretty well. So this is a Christy, uh, Christy Mathewson portrait, beautiful portrait, very sought after. Just your run of the mill 350 sweet cap back right there, but really nice. Uh, this is a Rube Sovereign 460, which is a fun back. For me, I don't necessarily collect uh, other than the Mordecai Brown portrait where I'm trying to collect all the backs for that one specific subject. I am uh, open in my set to the highest grade of whatever Hall of Famer and preferably in SGC. I would never crack something open. I've thought about it a few times. I have asked on the forums and Facebook pages of, hey, Thoughts about cracking this open and resubmitting it to SGC. People were like, not even just this card, but like, don't do that because once it's in a slab, you have that grade and they could regrade it and it could come back trimmed and then you're out whatever you paid for it. So better safe than sorry. Uh, it's possible you could just sell it and then um, buy what you want as opposed to taking a gamble. Maybe you're the gambling type. So anyway, there's a 460 subjects for Rube throwing or follow through. John McGraw, finger in the air. Um, this is a Sovereign 150, I believe. Yeah, really clean card. Sovereign 150, really clean. And uh, 
PSA 4. So a nice card. I wanted to show some cards that I haven't shown before. Here is uh, a Beckett. I have less than five Beckett cards. Uh, and this is one of those that I asked the community about. I said, hey, what if I crack this open and send it to SGC? And they're like, that thing is beat up. I got it for like, I don't want to exaggerate, 50 bucks, 80 bucks, something like that. Um, which is really cool for a Hall of Famer Sovereign 350. And it's got that like dark, you know, got the dark, um, maybe you can see it, the dark um, print. So some are darker, some are lighter. Like that one, that's a good contrast right there. So you can see that the Sovereign on the left, the 350 is like dark green and the one on the right is a light green. So I think it's forest green and apple green or something like that, green apple. People call them different things, but you know, when you get deep down the rabbit hole and you're trying to collect everything, which is not me when it comes to Sovereign. All right, I got a Vic Willis, one of those debatable Hall of Famers, but it's a cool back and it's a cool card. I got it in a collection. Um, so it's a PSA 5, which is starting to tip the scales towards some more sought after investment level stuff, as people would say. It's a 350 460 sweet cap and it is a factory 42 overprint. So pretty cool. Here is one that I got graded on my own. This is from my very first SGC submission. And this is a Cy Young glove showing or glove shows. I've submitted this and just hoped that it wasn't trimmed because I bought it in a lot on eBay. And I bought the lot on eBay. It came in and my SGC order was ready to go out the next day. I paid for the uh, seven day turnaround time or the 14. This was a while back and it came back as a 2.5. And I was like, yeah, because if not, I was sending it back on the Ebays. So that's a fun card, Cy Young. Uh, a couple cobs here too. So this is a bat on shoulder right there. I have a uh, couple more of this subject, but this is the PSA graded one, 150s. I got a lot of 150s, I guess. And then the um, Ty Cobb bat off shoulder. So Ty Cobb has four. He has the green portrait, the red portrait, which is the most common one, and then the bat off, which is this one with the beautiful sunset and the like Detroit smokestack in the background, which is cool. And then the bat on, which was right before. So he has four subjects or four, you know, poses. And this is a 350, 460, 42. And this one has some paper loss or add. Yes, both <laughs> paper loss and paper add. And then this one has a real funky, see if I can zoom in a real funky cut on it. It goes from like left to right vertically going up both the top and the bottom. So if you can see, and the top is more pronounced than me. Knock it down a little bit. You see that? The right side, it has more paper. So it's kind of cut on an angle. It's got that angle cut. It's got a crease down the middle. Like man, out of all the twos, that is, a generous one in my opinion. So there we go. First to start is I prefer SGC. I like the way the holders look. I prefer the company, etc. cetera. Um, and I want all of my Hall of Famers in um, graded slabs. You might be different. You like might like them in a binder so you can flip through and look at them. For me, there is an investable asset as well, uh, aspect as well as a um, like protection. I just want to keep them safe. So. Uh, we're going to go over to the, uh, the Southern Leaguers next. So I prefer to collect the Southern Leaguers. There's like 38 of them, I think, in uh, SGC slabs, and I want to have them in Old Mill backs. You can have a couple options. I think it's Piedmont, Old Mill, or Hindu. Uh, maybe there's some other ones, but I know that the bulk of them are Piedmont, Hindu, and Old Mill. And so I prefer to have all of mine in Old Mill backs because I love the way that the backs look. And if I was going to do something to spice up my collection, it was going to be doing all the Southern Leaguers in Old Mill. Give myself a bit of a challenge. So this is uh, George Mannion. If you haven't picked up that book yet, I encourage you to do so. And his profile in there is essentially like, we don't know why he's in the set. <laughs> it's like, which is funny. Um, it's like, 
yeah, uh, he didn't play much. We don't know much about him. Good looking dude. Great card. This is a six MC qualifier. So it's got a qualifier on it as is in miscut. This is another one of those that I've asked on the forums. Hey, would you crack this open and try to submit it again and get like a four or five? No qualifier. People said, just leave it alone, man. Just leave it alone. So beautiful card. Beautiful card. Right there. So <clears throat> uh, this is a fun one. Harry Lentz slash Sense. His name is spelled wrong, so it's really S-E-N-T-Z. So they reprint at the top because if you go searching for this card and you search with the wrong name. So another one of those Southern Leaguers in an old mill back, Little Rock. You got Dutch. I have a bunch of Dutch's cards. I just really enjoy the uh, uh, background, the pose. It's one of those portraits I just really like. And if you've listened to my other videos, I am a portrait collector. I really enjoy that. Uh, Al Orth. I have this in um, a new SGC holder as well. And so i got to decide which one I'm going to keep based on grade and eye appeal. So that one's got some chunk or some dirt at the top right. George Page. I love all the popped collars. You know, it's such a great look. George Page from Charleston, yep. And then the old mill back. Pick this one up on eBay, late night auction, late, late. Got it for a super good deal in my opinion. Uh, Bill Bernhard, Nashville, SGC4, and it was already graded, which is cool. So got some issues up at the top there, just some discoloration or some kind of stain. So really nice card. That one is staying in my collection. Don't know if I'll ever go much higher than that. I'd rather upgrade the Hall of Famers than continue to upgrade the um, Southern Leaguers. But and you got Perry. I've shown him, showed him in my last one with a Hindu. So you got him in an SGC 2.5. So just to recap, I like to collect the Hall of Famers in slabs SGC. I like to any backs. I like to collect the Southern Leaguers in old mill backs. Prefer to have them all in SGC. We're going to go to some of those kind of in-between cards. So the Demet and the O'Hara come in the more common New York and New York and the less common St. Louis and St. Louis. I don't have the two St. Louis ones. Those are two of the last three cards that I need to complete the 520 uh, monster set. Um, but for these ones, I just thought it'd be cool because I know when I do pick up the other ones that they are going to be in slabs as well. So this came in one of the first collections that I bought. This is a Bill O'Hara in New York. Piedmont 350 right there. And that is a grade four. And then the Ray Demet and a sweet cat back. Very classic pose right there. I believe for those two, when they are in their St. Louis uniform subject, uh, they believe they only come in a polar bear back or most commonly in a polar bear back. Not for sure if it's exclusively. So, uh, so for some of those more iconic commons, whether it be because of the print runs, the uh, subjects, uh, maybe just like a guy like Hal Chase who has a ton of port or a ton of subjects. He has the most. Um, I just have some of his in these slabs. So I believe I have him in, in a uh, ungraded raw common in that binder right there uh, that we'll take a look at. So this is a sovereign back. It's an older SGC holder. It's a 350 with that green apple inking, but just a real classic portrait. If you haven't looked up Hal Chase, look up his story. It's it's pretty fascinating. Um, then we got our two fun ones. Um, they didn't know it at the time, but these two gentlemen would become known about a decade later. Where are we at? 350, 460, maybe eight years later as the Black Sox. So Chick Gandal and Eddie Seacott. If you haven't seen the movie or read the story, pause this video right now and look up Black Sox. They essentially threw the World Series, I believe, against the Cardinals. And uh, so just for some of these more popular, iconic cards, even if you're not a T206 collector, people like to collect Black Sox because there is so much history and controversy being banned from baseball. Shoeless Joe Jackson, 
Um, so there's two cool ones right there. Would love to get them in SGC, but also I probably wouldn't sell these. I would just buy SGC ones and keep them too. <clears throat> George Brown, Washington. So Brown spelled incorrectly. And there is a, uh, a Washington one and a Chicago one. So the Washington one is a little more difficult to find. Uh, I did not get this graded. I bought it this way in a Facebook group. And I just left it in there. I also have an ungraded one, a raw one in the binder. But one of those ones is a little more difficult to find. We'll run you 50 to 150, depending on the grade you want. Here's another one. Very infamous uh, subject right here. So this is... Once you go by beyond 520, there's actually 524 cards in the set. Uh, two of them are super short print Hall of Famers. That would be the infamous Honus Wagner, then the Eddie Plank, and then the next two is a Sherry Maggie portrait misprint, and then there is a Joe Doyle hands above head misprint. And so you can see it down here at the bottom. Let me get it into the light a little bit. But at the bottom down here, there's a ton of space a ton of space left over to the right of New York and that's because they printed him with a New York National League um, designation right there essentially it said Doyle comma NY New York National and he did not play for the National New York team he played for the American League New York team and so they pulled it super quick the legend goes and there's not many of them out there so I've heard people say things like um, if you have the money to buy a Sherry Maggie or an Eddie Plank, you can find them. But these ones just don't come up very often. Not this one right here. This is the corrected one where they took off National real quick and printed it. So it's still cool to have. It's still a part of history. This card, just like the George Brown, uh, is going to run you uh, a little bit more than um, your average common kind of card, common player, non-Hall of Famer. So... There you go, Joe Doyle, that's fun. Would love to upgrade that one as well as the uh, George Brown. And then John Titus right here. Uh, there's another card out there, a Doc Atkins as well. I think I featured that one in my last video. But these are uh, cards in which the legend or the word on the street is just somebody's hoarding them. They've hoarded them in the past. Maybe they have short prints um, and that because of supply and demand, the price just goes up and up. So. Uh, I have a couple Titus cards, and this is one in a PSA that I'm going to be selling because I have it in an SGC, and I believe I have one in a 1.5 and a 3, so I'll probably keep the 3 and sell the other ones. My goal is not to hoard these cards. Uh, my goal is to collect and then continue to work on my number. So you might hear people from time to time talk about, like, what's your number, what's your average, and so I want to work on my average which is when you take all of the number grades divided by 520, what are you at? So I haven't hit the 520 yet, but when I do hit it, I'm going to take all of those grades, add them up, and uh, divide by 520 and see what my average grade is and kind of push up over time. That's kind of like those intermediate level ways to collect the set um, as a whole. So uh, last focus on the graded ones. Uh, I shared in my last video that I love the Mordecai Brown portrait. Want to collect all 11 backs and subjects. I also love the uh, Detroit Redbacks. I just, um, I'm a Detroit fan. I live in Michigan, grew up here, left for a while, came back, and I just, Davy Jones, fantastic. I should figure out how many I have. It's probably getting close to double digits, but just because I like them and I pick them up whenever I see them. Uh, Boss Schmidt, look at that guy right there. Pop collar, super cool looking guy. You got Claude Rossman. And then you got George Mullen. That, <laughs> that funny haircut right there. Uh, sometimes my kids will go, why do they do their hair that way? I'm like, why do they, who let, who let them go out of the house? So there's obviously more uh, red portraits, including the Cobb, um, but I just like to keep them. Maybe one day I'll do a collage or something. And uh, whenever I see them, I just pick them up. These were, you know, I think I got them in a larger purchase for about $35, $40 a piece. And they're probably worth $45, $50. So not big money. Um, and really for these, the, uh, the portraits, the red Detroit portraits, I'm not picky. So let's take a look at the binder real quick. 
and then we'll wrap it up on this third video of the T206 journey. Um, so my binder right here, first of all, I want to talk about ways to store your cards. I got this binder in the, the case, which is super nice. So I got this in one of the collections that I bought, um, but I know this from collecting other cards that you want to have a way for your cards to hang if they are in plastic sleeves. So the focus is all messed up. Sorry, guys. Okay, so let me show you. All right. So right here, you want your pages to hang. And the reason that you want them to hang is that because if you don't let them hang over time, this edge right here, the farthest left edge on the farthest left uh, column of cards can get damaged. So uh, whether you're collecting any kind of card and it's in a plastic sleeve, you want to let them hang. And so one of the best ways to do that is to get a, a photo album, album like this, and then you can stand it up. And so when this goes on my shelf, it goes in like this. I'll show you. It goes in. And then the pages hang. So when I pull it off the shelf, I know that it's up. But go like that, bring it out. So let me get the brand on this real quick if you like this album type. It is Archival Methods LLC. Giving you a shout out just because I like your product. <clears throat> if you want to sponsor me, you can. If not, I already bought it or got it. So. Archival methods right there. There's all their information. Collector grade three ring binder, prevent bending and locking, etc. Boom, boom. So I take it one step further and I like to let them hang, let it all hang out. So um, now here is another area where people get very opinionated on how you should organize your cards, whether it be Hall of Famer, Southern Leaguer, Short Prince, whatever it is. Uh, some people are just destined on putting them all in here. For me, I like having all the teams together. Some people think that that's absolutely crazy and you should do it alphabetically. What I think I'm gonna do is probably a little bit of both. I'm gonna have one that's in um, all the teams and then one that's alphabetical. So what you get with the teams is you get some, some open spots because not every team takes up a 15 spot page in there. So uh, for me, this is the Baltimore set. As I've talked about in the past, Baltimore tends to just be a, a tad bit pricier, whether they were per, you know, underproduced, Baltimore fans are crazy, and they just are fanatics when they collect it, whatever it might be. So uh, I am going to flip through some of these pages. I should check out some of my binders, actually. All right, I'm back, and we're going to check out a little bit of my binder in here. So a while back I took out some cards that I thought would potentially grade well and I sent them in just trying to test myself. Uh, I kind of go the beater route for the binder. So I'm going to put cards in here that are well loved, dirty, got some cool writing on it right there. creased up, whatever it might be. <laughs> Steamer Flanagan, great name. All right, Buffalo page, like this one. Whew. White has seen better days, but I got him. Uh, Bill Burns, another one of those black socks. Right there, a little pinhole in the top of that one. Ah, I have another Bill Burns. <laughs> Put all the extra ones at the bottom. Here is, uh, hey, two cards to look at that are cool. First one is George Brown, Chicago. I showed you George Brown, Washington, so that one's in a little better shape. And then there is one of several really beat up uh, paint chipping, burns on the edges, uh, Hall of Famers that I picked up on Net54 for an unbelievably cheap price. So just some cool 
beaters. Maybe I'll do the whole binder beaters as well. So i got to put that one back in. That was the ghost image one from the second video. One of those great portraits right there. Uh, swapped him out, put a beater in there from my duplicates pile, and then got him graded. Got a couple graded Steinfeld portraits. Just really like that portrait, the orange one as well. Cincinnati team, Dick Egan, Ewing. If you ever see Ewing, I think he's also, if he's in the 350 subjects, this is a sweet cap, but if he's ever in a 350 subject, I believe he is an Elite 11, which is like a really short print. So search Elite 11 T206 and read up on that. More Cincinnati. This would be the Columbus team. Right there, small set. Behind them is Cleveland. And we'll probably stop after Detroit. Because don't, you guys don't need to listen to me talk about all these. So like I said again, these uh, would be like cobs if I had them right there. You see they're empty. Um, so somebody who collects alphabetically uh, would also have spots too, but you could fill them in. Donovan portrait, the Davy Jones, another Rossman and Schmidt and Mullen. Those red portraits are awesome. Willits. So, yeah. So anyway, that's how I collect the commons. Um, there's another George Brown. That's a Washington one, so I have one graded and one raw. But yeah. So uh, if you are on a T206 journey as well, I encourage you to uh, showcase some of your cards, showcase your backs, and really encourage others to uh, collect in the community as well. So anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, subscribe for more videos. Talk to you later.